do now. Uh, and the management of easy trip planners is joining in. The stock has uh, seen an 8% up move this week alone. A lot of that was actually yesterday. It was up, up and away. Today it's, uh, uh, you know, just about a 1% move. The company reported, uh, uh, you know, a slightly operationally weak set of numbers for the first quarter. To talk about this and, of course, how the business is shaping up trends uh, from here on, we have Prashant Pithi, co-founder of Easy Trip Planners. Prashant, thank you for joining in. So, you know, I I'm just going back to the first quarter numbers for a, for a reference where the top-line growth has been fantastic. I think year-on-year -year it was up about 42%. Uh, and even sequentially, you manage a 6 7% top-line growth. But we are not seeing the, you know, uh, the similar sort of growth percolate down at the EBITDA level or at the PAT level. Whether I look at things quarter on quarter or year on year, there seems to be a bit, bit of a compression uh, at the operational front. Why is that happening? And do you see that changing second quarter onwards? Well, firstly, thank you for having me on the show. Uh, for this particular quarter, as you have rightly said, that our top-line grew by 43% year on year, right? Now, if you look at the industry, uh, entire DGCA data, DGCA suggests that year on year, uh, sorry, quarter, year on year, they grew by about, uh, the Indian industry, aviation industry grew by about 18%. So clearly we were able to gain market share du during this particular period and because of which uh, we grew by 43% while industry grew by 19%. And since we pushed the pedal a little bit hard, uh, we had to give slightly more amount of discount this time and which is why you saw that the, PAT did not grow in the same lines as whatever, uh, you know, our top line grew. However, we believe that this was just one of the times where we believe that next quarter onwards, uh, our PAT would be in lines with the growth of our GMV as the company is growing uh, pretty decently. Uh, Prashant, just to press on that point about more discounts that you had to offer, and I'm reading what you'd said in the conference call which took place post Q1. We experienced lower incentives from airlines due to the shortage of inventory, primarily because of the go-first issue. We believe this is a one-time situation as airlines build inventory and go-first resumes operation. And secondly, the hotel's business has recorded a small loss during the quarter, which has also impacted the overall profitability. The thing is that, you know, go-first is still not uh, resumed operations as of now. So that inventory crunch, uh, the shortage of inventory, which you referred to in Q1, does it still persist? Are we still seeing the same discounts that we had in Q1, in Q2? And if you could give an outlook on the hotel's business as well. Well, no, uh, the crunch existed only for about a month period when uh, Go Air went off uh, like without any notice. And because of which there was a crunch at that particular moment. However, the shortage of demand uh, has reduced now and which is why the things have become pretty normal. And in Q2, we are expecting our hotel business to become profitable or break even again. Uh, this is right that our hotel business grew by 123% year on year, which is why, you know, again, uh, the discounts were slightly higher, as I mentioned before, uh, both for the flights and for the hotels. Uh, but for this particular quarter, we have taken that into consideration and we expect in this particular quarter numbers to look uh, really good. Okay, so since you're expecting things to normalize Q2 onwards, give us a sense, I mean, uh, you know, ballpark speaking, year as a whole, uh, because the margin ranges quarterly basis, I mean, they've been really, really lumpy. I think we were 35, 36% as of Q4, it came down to 28% in Q1. But a sustainable uh, annual rate, uh, EBITDA margin level, what is it that you're hoping to uh, sort of, uh, you know, keep the business running on? Well, we are looking forward to grow our top line to about 15,000 crores for this particular year, as I've already mentioned this before, from 8,000 crores last year, we're looking forward, our Dubai business is growing fantastically. Uh, we did business of about 53 crores in Middle East, vis-a-vis uh, -vis if you compare last year, it was about seven crores. So, and we feel extremely confident about, about, about our Europe business as well, because of which I feel extremely comfortable to say that uh, this year we should be able to do about 15,000 total crores of uh, GMV. And yeah. we are looking for our, a bit uh, uh, margins at about a 30% uh, to grow in that particular city. Okay, okay. 30% is what you're looking at um, for the full year. Prashant, uh, you know, we were looking through all of the details. While, while your Q1 bookings are around 32, uh, 32 lakh bookings which were made in Q1, can you tell us how Q2 has been so far? Because we're well into the quarter there as well. And if you can also break that up into what's been international and domestic, because of course international will be the higher margin uh, piece here. So we are seeing international to be about at 30-35% now uh, in terms of booking revenues. And in terms of business, the business is doing great uh, for the uh, quarter two. Uh, we have had a fantastic uh, 
you know independence day sales uh, and then we have had couple of other uh, you know opportunities as well to entice people to travel with ease my trip another thing which has happened in this particular quarter is uh, we have acquired three companies uh, uh, all of them are in holiday space uh, we are trying to consolidate a uh, holiday space at ismar trip uh, one is basically uh, trip shoppy the other one is do the other one is guidelines and at ismar trip we are looking to acquire further more companies we are looking for disruptive companies where we can actually give them business at ismar trip almost about 10 lakh people visit our website on daily basis related to travel so we are looking to acquire companies which are profitable which are growing well and you know who knows uh, uh, one of these companies which we are acquiring might even become another ismar trip in the next couple of years Mm. I so uh, what's the cash in the books because you've already done three acquisitions which you highlighted uh, could you give us an update on the cash and uh, do you think you will be able to close another acquisition in the coming year so we are utilizing uh, our equity as a capital uh, to acquire okay. these companies basically all these company these three companies they are growing profitably and they don't need cash in the company so it's basically an equity swap deal hence whatever the cash on the book is it's actually not material or it it, it is not is relevant in the acquisition strategy which we have mm so you know just to understand this you are acquiring these companies as a strategic investor or you are acquiring them to assimilate them in your business as a strategic investor where they will continue to run independently and we will okay. we will basically give tra- traffic to them so one of the companies which we acquired is basically guidelines and the do they both are offering fixed travel packages to consumers so where people could go to their website could see the complete itinerary and can join the group to go to balkan region to go to european region uh, along with them and they are, they both are doing business in the tunes of about uh, between anywhere between 30 crores to 50 crores on annual basis now mm-hmm. these companies are basically t- taking people on fixed itineraries and as a ot online travel agencies we perform best if there are fixed itineraries where people can just like they book their flights they book their hotels they can see the entire package no customization can happen and if they like the package they can just join and they can go along so Prashant, and unfortunately required, uh, you know. got it got it prashant that unfortunately running out of time um, but i'd must ask you this one final question before we wrap up for today uh, the promoter stake has also been coming down i think it was close to 74.9 just under the regulatory threshold in march but it's come down to about 71% as of june uh, what's the intent are you looking to monetize any more of uh, the promoter stake we are not looking to sell any more right now for the time being okay okay all right uh, got that thank you very much uh, apologies had to cut you short there but just running out of time we'll have a longer conversation on some of these strategic deals that you're doing look forward to that next time okay quick break on that no